Runway Declared Distances When is runway length not just the length of the runway? Well, the answer is when you look up its definition in the Aeronautical Information Manual. You see, it turns out that runway length has several different meanings. So, let's see what these are. Not all the physical length of the runway's paved surface can be used for taking off or landing, but you already know this, right? You've heard about things such as displaced thresholds and might have also read about runway safety areas, stopways, and even clearways. All of these might offer some degree of restriction on using the entirety of the runway's paved surface. As you probably know by now, you can use the runway and any displaced threshold on that runway for taking off. No portion of the runway before the displaced threshold can be used for landing. Looking at the chart supplement excerpt for Williams Clark Memorial Field, you see two runways, runway 18 and runway 36. The airport diagram shows a solid runway strip 6,000 feet in length, and no, it's not 100 feet in length and 6,000 feet wide either. The textual runway description for runway 1836 indicates that the runway is 6,000 feet in length. So, you can use 6,000 feet to take off or land if it pleases you, but it might not please your passengers if you use all 6,000 feet for takeoff. Note that the 6,000 feet value is also the same distance shown on the sectional chart for Williams. But what about the chart supplement for White River Airport? The airport diagram shows that runway 19 and 1 is 6,350 feet in length. However, the threshold on runway 19 is displaced by 250 feet, indicated by three linked ovals. Now this tells you that you have 6,350 feet for takeoff on runway 19 and runway 1. That's right, there is no restriction for using the displaced threshold at the end of the runway for takeoff. Landing distances, however, are another matter. You have 6,350 feet of runway available for landing on runway 1 and 6,100 feet for landing on runway 19. And you must land beyond the displaced threshold. Now here we see something new that's being added to the chart supplement. It's called Runway Declared Distance Information. The FAA is adding declared distance information to the chart supplement for airports having commercial air operations. And this assists commercial operators in making the proper takeoff and landing calculations. But the information is also pertinent to you as a general aviation pilot too. You see, the FAA declares the distances for taking off or landing based on two things. And no, the FAA inspector does not stand on the end of the runway and declare something by yelling it out loudly either. Declared distances are based on the runway that's available and suitable for this purpose. The word suitable is the key here. Whatever obstacles or safety environmental concern have displaced the threshold on runway 19 at Whitewater impose some safety or environmental restriction on or near the beginning of that runway. Now, you might not know what that restriction is, and quite frankly, it really doesn't matter. What matters is that you know some restriction exists, and you should use that information appropriately. Now, declared distances come in four different varieties. There's the Torah, Toda, Asda, and Lida. Torah is the takeoff run available, and whatever you do, don't yell this out three times during takeoff because, well, it scares people. As a general aviation pilot, the Torah, again, takeoff run available, is very important to you. It's the distance covered from the start of your takeoff roll until your wheels leave the runway surface. In other words, your ground run. At Rods Airport, we see the runway length from threshold to threshold is 2,500 feet and the displaced portion of the threshold at the end of runway 8 is 500 feet in length. If you're departing on runway 8, this gives you a Torah takeoff run available of 3,000 feet. You can, after all, use the displaced threshold at the end of this runway for takeoff if it pleases you. Now, the TODA, T-O-D-A, is the takeoff distance available. On runway 8, the TODA is the same as the TORA since you can use the displaced threshold for takeoff at the end of the runway. Remember, 
You can't use any portion of the stopway, in other words, the pavement marked with yellow chevrons, located prior to runway 8, so don't even go there. Now, the ASDA, ASDA, or Accelerate Stop Distance Available, is something pertinent to pilots flying large turbine airplanes. In other words, typically commercial operators, not piston-powered general aviation airplanes. This is the distance required to accelerate to a specific takeoff speed, then come to a complete stop on the runway if an aborted takeoff becomes necessary. And here is where I want you to think of engine failure of a jet aircraft on takeoff. Runway 8 provides an ASDA, ASDA, of 3,000 feet. If there were a runway overrun at the end of Runway 8, such as a stopway, then this could be included in the accelerate stop distance available. Finally, the LDA is the landing distance available. Now, the LDA for runway 8 is 3,000 feet. Unless otherwise indicated in the chart supplement, you can use the displaced threshold as part of the landing run, but not the actual landing, of course. It's assumed here that you aren't going to be touching down in the last 500 feet of runway 8. At least, I hope you won't. Departing on runway 26 offers declared distance values that are both the same and different from runway 8. For instance, the takeoff run available, or the TORA, for runway 26 is 3,000 feet. Remember, you can't use the stopway, yellow chevrons, remember, at the end of runway 26 for taxi, takeoff, or landing. So, don't go there. However, the takeoff distance available, the TOTA, is not what you might expect for runway 26. That's because the takeoff distance available, the TOTA, can include any stopway or clearway present at the end of the runway. Unlike the end of runway 8, runway 26 has both a stopway that's 400 feet in length, that's the area marked with yellow chevrons, and a clearway. The clearway can extend 1,000 feet beyond the runway threshold. Any obstacles in the clearway surface rectangle, and these are typically very small obstacles like runway lights, shouldn't penetrate a plane angled upward at a slope of 1.25% as shown here. The takeoff distance available was meant primarily for pilots of turbine airplanes where the takeoff distance available assumes that the airplane reaches a minimum height above the end of the runway or clearway surface. Now, you're not a jet pilot yet, so just assume the TOTA takeoff distance available is the same as the airplane's takeoff run, the TORA. As I mentioned earlier, the accelerate stop distance available is used by jet turbine pilots. And that's not you, even though you may make the jet noise with your lips when taking off. Uh -uh, don't deny it. We've all done it at one time or another. And some of us still do. It turns out that the accelerate stop distance available can include the distance of any stopway at the end of the runway, but not the clearway. That's right. For runway 26, the accelerate stop distance available is 3,400 feet. Now, all along I've been saying you can't use the stopway, and that's true. With one exception, of course. There's always an exception, right? If you're operating a large turbine airplane, then you can use the stopway if necessary during an aborted takeoff. After all, an aborted takeoff in a jet is serious emergency business. So if you need to, go there. Finally, there's the LDA or landing distance available for runway 26, which is the distance beyond the displaced threshold all the way to the runway threshold for runway 8. Now, this gives you 2,500 feet of landing distance available. And, believe it or not, there are a few exceptions to these runway assignments that, well, we won't discuss because, quite frankly, they aren't relevant to you. So, keep in mind that the two declared distances that are relevant to you as a private pilot are the TORA, takeoff run available, and the LDA, or landing distance available. These are the values that you will use to calculate your ability to take off or land at an airport. And please remember that the chart supplement's declared distances are added to assist commercial operations occurring at that airport. If you don't see declared distance information in the chart supplement, and in many cases at smaller airports, you won't, then make your own runway assessments by looking for the text or graphic runway length information in that same chart supplement.